yesterday by identifying where in the jam we can find the information for these four problems. Who can tell me what will I do to simplify 3 to the negative 2? What will I do? Emma? Yep. 1 over 3 squared will be my answer. Okay, they do want these in exponential form, so we're just going to leave it as 1 over 3 squared. How about for problem 2? What am I going to do here? I have the quotient rule. What do I do with these exponents? So I can go look at Tuesday, August 30th, and see what it tells me to do there for the quotient rule. That means you're going to have to open up your binder and flip through some pages. Molly? Not quite. Remember, we don't flip until the very last thing. Ah. So what do we do with the quotient rule? What am I going to do here? Kaylee's looking for it. It was on Tuesday, August 30th. That's some bad luck. I might have an extra copy I can give you. Delaney, what do I do? Mm, we're not going to do that. I'm looking for the quotient rule on August 30th. Ignore the fact that these are negatives and just tell me what do we do with the exponents. Lily? You subtract. So I'm going to have 4 to the negative 3 minus negative 5. What do I do when I have minus a negative? Add. Then I'm going to get 4 squared. How about this one, that number 3, 0 rule? Everybody should know this. Everybody at the same time, what's my answer? Five. One. 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 All right, so if I get 5 to the 0 power by multiplying these, I'm still going to just get 1. Or, because this is just everything to the 0 power, my answer is going to be 1. And then problem number 4 requires two steps. The first step is going to be the product rule. So what will I do with this negative 7 and this 6? I add them, right? I'm not going to do the fraction yet. I'd only do that if I end up with a negative in the, in the last step. So negative 7 plus 6 will give me 2 to the negative 1. Jacob, what am I going to do now? Because this will be my last step, the fraction. 1 over 2 to the first power. And then can someone please explain to London and Eli, what, what were we doing down here? What was the situation down here for these problems? Emma? Yeah, so given the, each expression, I have to decide, well, this is, is going to be the product rule, so I know I'm going to have to add x and y. So what plus what will give me 8? And then with the quotient rule, what minus what will give me 8? And then with the product rule, or excuse me, power rule, what times what will give me 8? So there's lots of different answers. What cannot be an answer? What's the only thing that you cannot do to try to make that exponent. Beautiful? Yeah, you can't use the same number twice, right? X cannot equal Y. Does anybody remember the reason behind that? Mm -hmm. They do. Yep, they represent two different values, so we have to have two different values for our X and our Y. Okay? And then how about this last one? Negative 8. How did we know that this has to be a negative 8? How do we know? Molly? Because it's a little, it's a 1 over negative. Mm-hmm. 
and we want to be able to force it up to the numerator. Right? Imagine that this has a 1 underneath it. So we forced that up here, and now it's positive. Okay. All right, next page. We did these number 9 and 10 together. Who can explain this section to London and Eli? In your own words, what were we doing here yesterday? Molly? Yeah. So as we were working through simplifying this, we were coming up with stages, right? Phases of our solving process. And if we see it over here, we circle it because that means it's equivalent. Okay. So then down here, we realized that every step along the way happened to be something that was an equivalent on this one. Okay, so you're going to show all your steps. Look for the answers over here. All right, let's do number 11 and number 12. Who wants to tell me what would your first step be here? What would you do here? Delaney? Hmm? I'm going to replace, well, I can replace this part with a 1, but this 3 to the negative 8 is totally separate. So I can replace 3 to the 0 power with 1, but then what's 3 to the negative 8 times 1? What's anything times 1? It's what it was, right? So now I have 3 to the negative 8 over 3 squared. So now I have a quotient problem, right? Because I still have to multiply these. I want to make sure everybody understands that I'm still multiplying this times 1. So what am I going to do with this negative 8 and this positive 2? Tyler, what do you think? Subtract. Subtract, yep. 3 to the negative 8 minus 2 is going to give me 3 to the negative 10. I can't leave it like that. What will my final, final answer be? Beautiful? Yep. One over three to the tenth. All right, I have to shift this down to the denominator. Bless you. All right, number 12. If you remember, we have a secret little one here, right? If it doesn't have an exponent, that little one is hiding. So I'm going to distribute the 4 to both of these exponents, and I'm going to get 1 to the 4th over 6 to the negative 28th. Can I do anything with this 4 and this negative 28? Do they have the same base? No. No. So I can't do anything with that, but I can still keep working on this. What's 1 times 1 times 1 times 1? 1. So now I have 1 over 6 to the negative 28, but I can't leave that there. Where do I have to force this to go? To the numerator. Yep. So now I have 6 to the 28th make that more obvious. 6 to the 28th over 1. And if you don't have the over 1, that's fine. But some people like to have that there as a placeholder. It's up to you. Okay. Let's turn to the last page. This is called Fair Game Review. Anybody want to take a guess as to why it's called Fair game review? What do you mean? What do you, what do you think? What do I mean? What do you think? Chloe? Uh, you can nope. But that would be nice, but nope. It's not optional. Emma? No. Bailey? To see if you remember it, right? Anything I've already quizzed you over is fair game. Right? I can keep quizzing you over it the whole year if I want, which I will. So every quiz, you're going to have some information from previous quizzes that you should know. 
It's all fair game. Every quiz. The, we hadn't done anything before the first quiz, so that's why the first quiz didn't have one. Okay. So we just randomly pick what we think you maybe need extra work on. And for this quiz, it happens to be converting decimals to fractions and fractions to decimals. So let's go over these. How am I going to write this as a fraction? And if you only remember part of what to do, share what you remember. Delaney? It is going to be 999 as my denominator because it's repeating. And Delaney remembered that since this is the only real digit, it's going to be 5. Right? If I do 5 divided by 999 in my calculator, I'm going to get 0 0.00500505. If you put the two zeros in the numerator, that's not wrong. It can be there. All right. How do I change a fraction into a decimal? Don't be shy. What do I do? Maybe you guys want to get out that flip book from when Miss Los was here. It should be like towards the beginning of the year. Lily, you divide. Three divided by 25, and I'm going to add my negative there at the end of my answer. Does 25 go into 3? No. Nope. So I put a decimal, decimal. How many times does 25 go into 30? One. Uno. All right. Bring down the 5, bring down the 0. How many times does 25 go into 50? Twice. Dos, twice. And so I'm done. So my answer is going to be negative 0 0.12. Because I can't forget that it started out as a negative. Isn't this so exciting? Yeah. Everybody loves it. I love it. Thank you, Nick. I appreciate your enthusiasm because everybody else is giving me, like, I, I don't want to do this glares. I mean, I did that for social studies. Everybody's got their, everybody's got their thing. Right? Yeah. Okay. All right, how about 2.54? How am I going to write that? Two and 54 hundredths. What am I, how am I going to write that? Emma? Um, two yep. Two and 54 over 100. So it came to my attention earlier this morning when I was in a meeting with the other eighth grade math teachers that some students don't know how to read place value. You guys aren't those people, are you? You can read place value? Yes. Okay, so tell me, what would this be in place value? How would I say this number with all the place values? Molly? Um, it would be 3.726,000. Great. You don't have to say the point. You can say and, or you can say point. But what I was looking for was the 726,000, right? You guys all knew that? All of you knew it? Yeah. Leo, did you know that? Yeah. Okay. All right. And then this last one, how do I change a fraction into a decimal? What do we do up here? Divide, right? So the numerator divided by the denominator. Six cannot go into 50. How many times does six, or to fives, how many times does six go into 50? Hmm. Everybody's looking up at the ceiling like, hmm. Eight. I knew this in fourth grade. Nick? Eight. Eight. Six times eight is 48. Bring down a zero. How many times can six go into 20? Three times. Six times three is 18. Subtract. How many times can six go into 20? Does anybody see it yet? It's it is repeating. So it's going to be 0 0.83 repeating. The threes are going to keep going on and on forever because you're going to keep getting 20 and 18, 20 and 18, 20 and 18. Yes? I would not mind going back to number three. Thank you for asking nicely. Okay, well, guys. I do have a second study guide for you.
But before I pass that out, at the top of this study guide, I need everybody to turn to the front page and write parent signature. Okay. That is worth points. Chloe, I have yours for you to get back. Gonna have time to work on this. The answers to this personal study guide, just like a PDF of the answers, will be posted during SLT. Okay, so you can check your work during SLT today. forever. 